With how much I pay attention to the firearms industry, I see new guns come out all the time, but rarely do I say, I need that. We have all heard the rumors that SIG was introducing the third generation of MCX. We just didn't think it was going to hit the market as soon as it did. I remember sitting on my couch, sipping a cold one while scrolling through Instagram, when I saw the SIG Spear LT for the first time. That was the moment when I said to myself, I need that one in my life. I must have literally said it out loud because I remember the scolding look that my wife gave me. Ever since I reviewed the 300 Blackout MCX Virtus, the short stroke piston family from SIG has really grown on me. The MCX line has become extremely popular in the community, so I knew it was going to be a battle to find one of the new spears. Here's your disclaimer. SIG did not send this to me, I have zero affiliation with SIG, and no, it was not sponsored by anyone. I did what any desperate man would have done and went hunting on Gunbroker. I paid for this gun with my own money. Yeah, a little more than MSRP, but I'll tell you right now, worth it. Before we dive into today's video, I have to give a thank you to Black Dot Ammunition. Black Dot supply the 500 rounds as they do with the majority of my videos. If you're looking for quality ammo at an affordable price, head over to their website and use my discount code 715 Tactical at checkout to save some money on your order. Black Dot has been sponsoring this channel for a while now, so a big thank you to those guys for helping make these reviews possible. Let's dive in. The Spear LT is like the girl in the room that no one can take their eyes off of. Men will fight over her and feelings will get hurt when someone else gets to take her home. By the end of this video, I'm going to have your credit card bill racked up just a little more than it already is. This gun comes with an MSRP of $2,500 and also comes in a variety of flavors and lengths like 556, 762 by 39 and 300 Blackout. I'm not a 7.62x39 kind of guy, and with already having a Virtus SBR chambered in 300 black, I knew the 11.5 inch 5.56 was the one for me. Many times have I thought about getting a longer handguard and a 5.56 barrel for my Virtus. Now I'm really glad that I didn't. These are also available in pistol variations and SBRs. With pistol brace laws potentially changing this December, SIG has now decided to ship their pistols without braces. I could have gotten the SBR, but to me, it made more sense to get the pistol. I can still throw a brace on it at home and use it while waiting for a Form 1 to clear, versus buying the SBR and having it sit at your dealer while the Form 4 clears. I did a Form 1 the first day I got this thing. My last one took about 68 days to clear, so I'm hoping the Alphabet Boys can get their shit together and get this one cleared a little quicker. Let's start at the front and work our way to the back. The Spear LT ships with SIG suppressor mount. I don't own any SIG cans, so I immediately took it off and put on the Surefire 3 prong so I could run my RC2. It almost took an act of God to get the original mount off of this thing. I started getting a little sketched out by how hard I was twisting on it. Luckily, it came off and all was good. I got a little luckier than Corey from Superior Defense. I just saw his Instagram post and he literally ruined the lugs on his. Not good. I'm not going to say much about SIG's mount because I have zero experience with them. From what I've heard, they suck as a flash hider but are really good in the aspect of a mount for their cans. The lightened profile barrel is made from carbon steel and has a tapered muzzle. Tapers are cool for a number of reasons. The first being that they keep everything concentric when using a can. The chances of having a baffle strike significantly decrease. The second is that they do a great job of keeping carbon buildup off of the threads. SIG includes one of these taper adapters, so if you're running a muzzle device with a traditional 90 degree shoulder like the Surefire, you can still use it without any issue. This 11 and a half inch barrel is extremely accurate, and I'm pretty impressed by it. I was able to pull some nice groups when zeroing at 50 yards, and I was also able to make 150 to 200 yard shots with ease on a steel target using just a red dot. One thing that plagued the Virtus was the handguard. That big, chunky, thick old girl. It was extremely difficult to wrap your hands around and also presented an issue when using aiming lasers. With the design of the original handguard, it was possible for your devices to lose zero. Because it was only secured by the tab that locked into your pivot pin and the little tab at the top of the receiver. SIG made a very necessary change and gave the spear exactly what it needed. A slimmer profile handguard with a more secure lockup. This new handguard uses two screws, one on each side to give it the lockup that it needs. In order to remove this handguard, you do need to take out the two screws. 
Don't get me wrong, being able to take off the original Virtus handguard was very easy and convenient, but I need some stability in my life. It still has a tab on the bottom that secures with the pivot pin, and also the one on top that locks into the upper receiver. It also runs on these rails just like the original Virtus. I noticed an immediate difference when I first picked this thing up. The profile of the handguard is so much better, and it really allows you to wrap your hand around it for more control over the firearm. If I had to make one change to the original Virtus, the handguard was it. You still get your M-Lock slots on the rail, the access point to change your gas settings, but we did lose the QD points at the rear of the handguard. I'm fine with that. If that's the price that had to be paid, yep, yeah, so be it. If you plan on running an offset light, you'll still need to get a mount like this Arasaka that is specifically designed for the MCX handguard. I was hoping to use a standard offset mount with the handguard being redesigned, but nah, still not happening. Just something to make note of. This handguard got beat up a little bit during the review, but it held up, and I have to say, SIG did a very nice job at redesigning this. Just like the rest of the gun, it has an anodized coyote tan finish. I really like this color, man. I'm a sucker for FDE and coyote colors. The upper receiver hasn't changed much. It still has a quick change barrel system and the forward assist. My philosophy is, don't try to fix it if it isn't broken. SIG hasn't upgraded their ambi charging handle yet. I wish they would because simply put, it's fucking awful. If you get one of these, you might want to swap it out for one of these Radian Raptors. The Radian feels a lot better in quality, and the latches are easier to grab onto. Just like the offset light mount, you do need to use an MCX specific charging handle. The lower receiver brings a few more needed upgrades to the MCX, including full ambi controls and a new trigger. I'm a huge fan of true ambi lowers, and now SIG has joined the true ambi club. Just like the spear that was selected as the next gen service weapon, the Spear LT has the same right side bolt release and catch. In design, it's very similar to ADMs, where you lift up to lock the bolt open and push down to release it. It's a great design and it works. SIG is calling this trigger their flat blade match. It's a decent trigger and I don't have any complaints. The take up is very minimal and brings you to a tight distinct wall. I don't have any creep after the wall. It's a nice break and then the two stage reset. Another benefit is that you can use any AR trigger in the spear, whereas the Virtus had to use an MCX specific trigger like this Geisley. I might swap this trigger out in the future, but for now, it's going to stay here. It's definitely not as good as a Geisley, but for what it is, it's a decent two-stage trigger and it gets the job done. At the back of the receiver are QD points on each side for attaching a sling, and a 1913 pick section for mounting whatever stocks or braces. I like being able to fold this thing up and throw it in a bag, also be able to shoot it with the brace collapsed. That's the beauty of a piston system. For now, I have an SB Tactical brace on here, and I've been having quite a few issues with it. I've always had good luck with SB Tactical, and I've used their products on numerous pistols, but this one, it likes to fold on its own under fire. I was getting so irritated with this thing, I almost stopped filming. I think I would have taken that horrendous SIG brace over the SB that day. It seemed to fold by itself more while shooting suppressed, which to me was a little strange. I'm not sure why I was having such an issue with the brace. Like I said before, I filed the form on the first day. Fucking brace, dude. <laughs> oh, SB Tactical, you need to figure your shit out. Cause that ain't happy. When it comes to grips, I usually steer towards a Magpul or a DCM. But the SIG grip, yeah, it's on point. I really like the profile and my hand doesn't cramp after hours of shooting. Let's go over my final thoughts. The MSRP of $2,500 is a steal for this gun, if you can find one for that. I paid a tad over 3 k for this and honestly I'm still not disappointed. My wife is, but again, worth it. It's feature rich for both right and left handed shooters and it's easily adaptable given the AR control layout. I'm a huge fan of the controls, especially now being a true ambi lower. Everything's right where it needs to be. The weight difference is a game changer for the MCX line. This gun comes in at 6.1 pounds, where the Virtus is at 7 pounds. It may not seem like a ton, but it does make a difference when you're carrying this thing around. The recoil impulse is, it's kind of unique. 
I've always shot direct impingement guns, so I noticed the difference right away, just like I did with the Virtus. It hits just a little harder than the DI AR-15, but it's very manageable. With the addition of a suppressor, the recoil becomes almost unnoticeable. I didn't have any terrible gas blowback when shooting suppressed either. I was expecting to get gassed out as I usually do, but this thing wasn't gassy at all. My friend Ty, he's a lefty. I know, that poor bastard. And even being a left-handed shooter, he said there was no gas to the face. I did notice a lot of carbon buildup in unusual places though. You can see a lot of it coming from the back of the receiver and in some other weird places. The spear was 100% reliable through the 500 rounds both suppressed and unsuppressed. I wiped down the piston after about 350 suppressed rounds and added a few drops of oil to the system. It was hardly dirty and probably didn't even need it. Piston systems are pretty badass. They run a lot cleaner and cooler than a DI gun. Being able to change your gas settings on the fly is also handy. Reliability is everything when it comes to firearms, especially when you need it to protect you or your family. The Spear LT, it has it. The new handguard is probably my favorite upgrade. That ultra chunky handguard, it had to go. This one is so much easier to grip onto and knowing that it's more rigid puts me at ease if I decide to set this up as a night vision gun. I think SIG hit another home run with this. If you've been on the fence about throwing your money at one, I'm gonna tell you just do it. You'll be happy that you added one to your collection. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.